Good morning, everybody, and welcome as we come together as a church, as the family of the church on this day of Pentecost, which is very much the birthday of the Christian church. We're going to begin by saying some acclamations for the day of Pentecost. I'm going to say a sentence and you respond with the words, His Spirit is with us. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. We need not fear. His Spirit is with us. We abide in peace. His Spirit is with us. We are immersed in love. His Spirit is with us. We continue in hope. His Spirit is with us. We rejoice in faith. His Spirit is with us. Lord, may we know that you are here with us now as we gather together in your presence, that your Spirit is with us and abides with us all. We're going to sing the hymn, Come Down, O Love Divine. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts before God, who has prepared good things 
Fadal Silvate. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image. To the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing the canticle, the Jubilate, a song of joy. If you've got the order of service, it's, uh, it's number one in the back of the booklet. who at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore rejoice in his holy comfort. Through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each of one heard them speaking in the native language of each. 
Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dramatic scenes from the day of Pentecost, as the disciples were gathered together in Jerusalem. They were doing what Jesus had told them to do. He had instructed them, wait in Jerusalem, wait in Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. If Jesus hadn't told them to wait, what might they have done? Some of the disciples perhaps would have said to them, maybe about half of them would have said, well, let's get back to normal. Back to normality. Let's go back to our jobs and our families and our homes and carry on doing the things we were doing before we met Jesus. A bit like when Simon Peter, by the seashore during those period when the risen Jesus was appearing to his disciples, said to his fellow disciples, I'm going fishing. Let's go back to what we know. Or maybe another half of them, maybe the more impetuous and enthusiastic ones that have said, well, didn't Jesus tell us we've got to go to the ends of the earth? So let's go. Let's rush off and let's get on with it. But Jesus said to them, wait in Jerusalem. Wait. Waiting time can be very valuable. Think how the children of Israel in the Old Testament had to wait for 40 years, a lifetime, a generation and more, 40 years in the wilderness before they entered the promised land. Jesus spent 40 days in the desert following his baptism before he set about his ministry. Mothers are familiar with the idea of 40 weeks, 40 weeks of gestation, of pregnancy, preparing, getting ready for the arrival of the baby. And we've had the 40 days between Easter and Ascension Day, 50 days now until Pentecost, a period of waiting. Waiting can be of great significance. Waiting 
can be a test of our faith. But when we're doing nothing, we're not actually doing things, we have to decide whether we trust God. When we're waiting, we give the opportunity for the Holy Spirit to come to us, to meet us, to direct us. To lead us and direct us. The Spirit of Truth, says Jesus, will lead you into all truth. The Holy Spirit will lead us, will guide us. And that suggests that it's not a one-off experience. The Holy Spirit comes and zooms off again. The Holy Spirit journeys with us. The Spirit of Truth is revealed slowly, often over a lifetime. Yes, there will be dramatic moments sometimes, as when the Holy Spirit kick-started the church on that day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit empowered those disciples who'd been waiting for this to happen. He stirred them into action. And of course the Holy Spirit still does that. But most of the time, I'd like to suggest, it's when we wait and when we listen that the Holy Spirit comes and guides us. When we're able to embark on the journey of our lives with God. The Feast of Pentecost in our church's year is a time of transition. Up till now, from Advent until Pentecost, we've been focusing on the life of the ministry of Jesus. And now from Pentecost onwards, over the next six months, it's over to us. Jesus has handed the baton in this relay race over to us to be his disciples, to be his church, to be, by the power of his Holy Spirit, his presence in the world today. So let us, with those first disciples, wait in prayer, wait until we're clothed. to ask you to respond to the sentences inviting you to join in with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us affirm our common faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before we have our prayers, we're going to sing... Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me.
As we pray together in response to the bidding, Lord, come to bless us, we respond with the words and fill us with your spirit. We pray for God to fill us with his spirit, saying, Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. And we ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to help us to understand better your will for us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to keep us confident of your love wherever you call us to go. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness. Wherever there is division, sickness and sorrow, Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit. And we ask you to equip us for the work which you have given to each of us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the fruit of your Holy Spirit and we ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit given on Easter Day. We ask you to keep the whole church living and departing in the joy of eternal life. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. Generous God, you sent your Holy Spirit upon your Messiah at the River Jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room. In your mercy, fill us with your Spirit. Hear our prayer. And make us one in heart and mind to serve you in Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The 
God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer a sign of peace to those around. going to sing the hymn, Holy Spirit, come confirm us. Spirit of truth, lead you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and strengthen you to proclaim the word and the works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you. to serve the Lord in the name of Christ.